Each one of you is involved directly with, uh, with whistleblowers. Some of you are whistleblowers uh, yourselves. This committee relies heavily on whistleblowers. Quite frankly, the American people rely heavily on whistleblowers. It is the people who have the courage to uh, do the right thing and point out uh, what is going wrong, sometimes at their own peril. We are trying to fix it where it isn't as perilous for them. But these are true uh, American heroes who, who do the right thing and, and come forward. And uh, I, I want to give each one of you uh, the opportunity, if, whoever is watching this on the web that might be thinking about being uh, a whistleblower or somebody who is reading the transcript of this hearing that is thinking about being a whistleblower, what would you, uh, take 10 or 15 or 30 seconds, what would you say to somebody who is thinking about becoming a whistleblower? And we will go down the line and start with uh, Ms. Lerner. When we are done, I will pass on to Mr. Lynch. I think what I would say to a whistleblower is that um, they have a lot of avenues to come forward. Um, and I particularly want them to think about the Office of Special Counsel. Uh, we are a robust, active agency. We are understaffed, but we are getting terrific results for whistleblowers. We have a record number of corrective actions, almost 200 this year um, on behalf of whistleblowers. Um, we need people to come forward with their disclosures, and I think the results that we have gotten, um, because whistleblowers have come to us, show the value. Um, we have gotten amazing results at the Air Force, the FAA, the Department of Homeland Security, and most recently at the VA. And just today, in fact, the new Secretary of the VA, I believe, testified that he wanted everybody to be a whistleblower at the VA. Now, probably going a little bit too far. But the message is, I think, he wants people to know that the culture is going to change at the VA. And we need whistleblowers to come forward in order to make our agencies, our government, better and safer for the American public. Ms. Grundman. Thank you. Um, one of our functions is, of course, the studies function. And we have uh, routinely seen that Federal employees still perceive evidence of prohibited personnel practices, uh, one of them being reprisal for whistleblowing. So that creates a culture problem. Um, we commend this body for taking the initiative to change the law, to, to create new avenues for whistleblowers to come forward. But ultimately, as Ranking Member Lynch mentioned at the beginning, uh, the culture needs to change within an agency, whereby employees are encouraged to come forward and whereby their allegations are investigated. And when the investigation is done, if there is no wrongdoing accomplished, employees should be told an investigation was completed and you did the right thing by coming forward. So the culture change is what needs to occur, and it is educational um, and it is long term. Thank you very much. Mr. McClain. I would advise people that your whole life is going to change. It doesn't matter what you believed what was doing right at the time. Years down the road, everything that you said and done is going to be highly scrutinized. A lot of your friends at work are never going to talk to you again. You could lose your job. It is a huge, huge risk. Prepare for the absolute worst. Would you do it again? Absolutely. I was a law enforcement officer. You paid me three times, four times more than your average Federal worker to make split decisions in one of the most dangerous uh, areas to, uh, to, to, enfor to enforce the law. So it was my duty, it was my oath to do what I had to do. And at the time, I believed I was doing everything to protect the public. So absolutely, I took that law enforcement oath, so I would do it again and again. There's better, better people than me have, have given up worse, given up more. Thank you very much. Dr. Uh, Van Vogen. Well, right now. Uh, microphone. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right now, I think that uh, the applause for whistleblowing is, is, um, is, is frustratingly um, um, uh, anemic at best. Um, I, I think that uh, the current culture is that you, know, you have to be masochistic, a Don Quixote, or 
you know, want to have financial ruin and have, you know, and, and, and have pyrrhic victory and, and, and a probable divorce. And, you know, these are the, the statistics. I look at Lois Jensen, uh, you know, of the, the, the class action, first class action lawsuit in America. I lived a few miles from where she was in, 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 up in uh, uh, Virginia, Minnesota. Um, after 12 years, and she and a half dozen people got 600,000, but she, her life was ruined, and she's still a wreck. You know, if we think in terms of um, uh, Mr. Wigan uh, of the tobacco industry, you know, he's, he's, been, he's been psychologically uh, devastated as a result of all of these things. I myself, um, you know, thankfully, I survived, but, but, but very barely. So the bottom line is, you know, we got Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, and to give them badges, we should start early and really make it happen. Where's my badge? I think that if we, you know, if we really want to give positive reinforcements, then make it visible and, you know, to say you are a hero and mean it. Because right now people say, oh, they want to applaud a whistleblower, but they don't want to be too close to the whistle. Thank you very much. And Mr. Devine. Uh, Ms. Mr. Chairman, the first thing I would say is that uh, this is the unsurpassed is a crossroads decision in your life, uh, which will never be the same. Make this decision with your family and the loved ones who are depending on you because they are going to be affected by it. And the cost will be severe if you are going to make a significant difference. But if you are willing to pay the price, you can make a difference because there is nothing more powerful than the truth. So think it over. Number two, do your homework. It is the highest risk decision you will be making, and you have to do the most advanced preparation. So get Gett's book, um, The Whistleblower Survival Guide, a handbook for committing the truth. It is based on the experience of 6,000 whistleblowers' lessons learned. And the third thing I would advise is their Federal civil servant to convince Congress to give you rights that are analogous to those of corporate employees who have full, normal access to court to enforce them. Thank you very much.